Okay, international trade activity. International trade activity is critical to an integrated economy that involves numerous components that can be manipulated for the benefit of money launderers and terrorist finances, such as banks, currency exchange, free trade zones, cross-border payments, ports, invoices, goods, shipments, shell companies, and credit instruments that oftentimes are inherently complex transactions. So yeah, this is what they're gonna talk about here. This is basically talking about trade-based money laundering. So trade-based money laundering and the black market peso exchange are two significant money laundering techniques that have proven successful in illicit finance. Typically, free trade zones are manipulated in both techniques. Okay. With more than 3,000 free trade zones uh, in 100, over 135 countries, FTZs play an integral role in the international trade. FTZs are designed geo designated geographic areas with special regulatory and tax treatments for certain trade-related goods and services. Free trade zones are often located in developing countries near ports of entry, but are separate from traditional ports of entry and typically operate under different rules. Most major free trade zones are also located in regional fin financial centers and link international trade hubs with access to global financial markets. Examples of free trade zones are the Colon Free Trade Zone in Panama and the Shanghai Free Trade Zone, officially the China Pilot Free Trade Zone in China. According to the FATF's March 2010 report on money laundering vulnerabilities in free trade zones, systematic weaknesses of free trade zones includes inadequate AML CFT safeguards, minimal oversight by local authorities, weak procedures to inspect goods, legal and illegal entities, including appropriate record keeping and information technology systems, and the lack of cooperation between free trade tra trade zones and local customs authorities. Okay, so I guess a lot of these sort of companies have to, you know, they're regulated to do things like record keeping. Um, because they manipulate certain invoices and that's how you have um, trade-based money laundering. You know, you have things like over-invoicing, under-invoicing, ghost shipping, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I might talk about, it. actually it's going to talk about here. Trade-based money laundering techniques. When men's briefs and women's underwear enter a country at a price of $739 per dozen, missile and rocket launchers export for only $52 each, and full toilets ship out for less than $2 each, one should notice the red flags. These manipulated trade prices represent money laundering, tax evasion, and or terrorism financing. In a June 2006 report called Trade-Based Money Laundering, FATF defined trade-based money laundering, uh, TBML, as the process of disguising the proceeds of crime and moving value through the use of the trade transactions in an attempt to legitimize their illicit origins. In practice, this can be achieved through the misrepresentation of the price, quantity, or quality of imports or exports, Moreover, trade-based money laundering techniques vary in complexity and are frequently used in combination with other money laundering techniques to further obscure the money trail. Okay, so it's like money laundering, but they do a bunch of other stuff. Money launderers can move money out of one country by simply using their illicit funds to purchase high-value products and then exporting them at very low prices to a colluding foreign partner who then sells them on the open market at their true value. To give the transactions an air of legitimacy, their partners may use a financial institution that for trade or financing, which often entails letters of credit and other, and other documentation. 2006 FATF study concluded that trade-based money laundering represents an important channel of criminal activity and given the growth of world trade and increasingly important money laundering and terrorism financing vulnerability. Moreover, as standards applied to other money laundering techniques become increasingly effective, the use of trade-based money laundering can be expected to become increasingly attractive, okay. According to the guidance paper on combating trade-based money laundering on, there's a book on, look, there's a book on trade-based money laundering, it's by a guy called John Kinsella. It's basically the Bible of trade-based money laundering. So uh, if you want to ever want to get involved in trade-based money laundering, you need to read that book. Uh, it's basically the only book. Um, February one developed by the Hong Kong Association of Banks with input with from the Hong Kong Monetary Authority Understanding the commercial purposes of any trade transaction is a key requirement in determining money to money laundering risk. The guidance refers to six ways to execute trade-based money laundering. So here we go, over-invoicing or under-invoicing. Over-invoicing, by invoicing the goods or service at a price above the fair market value, the seller is able to receive value from the buyer. The payment for the goods or service will be higher than the value that the buyer receives when it is sold on the open market. Under-invoicing, by un invoicing the goods or service at a price below the fair market price, the seller is able to transfer value to the buyer. 
the payment for the goods or service is lower than the value of the buyer will receive when it is sold on the open markets. Okay, so there are two ones, over invoicing, under invoicing. Over shipping or short shipping. The difference in the invoice quantity of goods and the quantity of goods that are shipped whereby the buyer or seller gains excess value based on the payment made. Ghost shipping, fictitious trades where a buyer and seller collude to prepare all the documentation indicating goods were sold, shipped and payments were made but no goods were actually shipped. Okay, so that's ghost shipping. Shell companies, uh, not really normal for trade-based money laundering but here, used to reduce the transparency of ownership in a transaction. Multiple invoicing, numerous invoices issued for the same shipment of goods, thus allowing the money laundering, the money laundered to the opportunity to make numerous payments and justify them with the invoices. Black market trades, commonly referred to as the black market peso exchange, whereby a domestic transfer of funds is used to pay for goods by a foreign importer. Okay, cool. Letters of credit are another vehicle for money launderers. Letters of credit are a credit instrument issued by a bank that guarantees payments on behalf of its customer to a third party. So you basically have letters of credit just to sort of facilitate the transaction better. They basically share the risk. When certain conditions are met, letters of credit are commonly used to finance export because exporters want assurance that the ultimate buyer of its goods will make payment. And this is given by the buyer's purchase of a bank letter of credit. The letter of credit is then forwarded to a correspondent bank in the jurisdiction in which the payment is, ma is to be made. The letter of credit is drawn on when the goods are loaded for shipping, received at the importation point, clear customs and are delivered. Letters of credit can be used to facilitate money laundering by transferring money from a country with lax exchange controls, thus assisting in creating the illusion that an import transaction is involved. Moreover. Letters of credit can serve as a facade when money laundering, when laundering money through the manipulation and import of export prices. Another method of using letters of credit illicitly is the conjunction with the wire transfers to bolster the legitimate appearance of non-existent trade transactions. Okay. In 2012, the Asia Pacific Group of Money Laundering (APG) issued the APG Typology Report on Trade-Based Money Laundering which reaffirmed the conclusions of the 2006 FATF study that APG study cited the lack of reliable statistics related to trace-based money laundering as a major obstacle in devising strategies to tackle it. To assist in recognizing the multiple forms of trade-based money laundering, the paper enumerates specific characteristics and red flags associated with jurisdictions, goods, corporate structures, and predicate offenses. It it concluded that any strategy to prevent and, and combat trade-based money laundering needs to be ba based in disman on dismantling trade-based money laundering structures while allowing genuine trade to occur unfettered. It calls for an integrated holistic approach with the emphasis on integrating coordination and international cooperation to standardize data and statistics, create domestic task force, deliver trade-based money laundering focused training, and conduct further research. Case study. In 2000, February 2011, the U.S. Department of Treasury designated the Lebanese Canadian Bank LCB as a financial institution of primary money laundering concern, asserting that Hezbollah derived financial support from drug and money laundering schemes, including TBML. The trade-based money laundering component of the operation involved consumer goods worldwide, include used cars purchased in the United States and shipped to West Africa for resale, with a portion of proceeds allegedly funneled to Hezbollah. Okay, this is a big thing, actually. A lot of... Um, basically used in stolen cars gets shipped to Nigeria from the US and in Europe but mainly the US and then they, they from there they go to a, a new sort of you know an, a new system where they can be purchased in May 2014 FinCEN issued an advisory on the use of funnel accounts and trade based money laundering the advisory was the result of a possible impact of 2010 Mexican law that restricted cash deposits of US dollars in Mexican banks Subsequently, the restrictions were expanded to include similar deposits made exchange accounts, Casa de Cambio, and brokerages, Casa de Bolsa. In Mexico, furthermore, uh, additional guidance was issued by FinCEN based on bulk cash smuggling trends based on restrictions that indicated an increase in the use of funnel accounts to move illicit proceeds of Mexico-related criminal organizations. FinCEN defines a funnel account as an individual or business account in one geographic area that receives multiple cash deposits often in amounts below the cash reporting threshold from the which the funds are withdrawn in a different geographic area with little time elapsing between the deposits and withdrawals. 
ways to identify possible funnel account activity include the following. Uh, an account open in the US state receives numerous cash deposits of less than $10,000, which is the CTR reporting threshold by unidentified persons and at branches outside of the geographic region where the account is domiciled. Business account deposits take place in a different geographic region from where the business operates. Individuals opening and making deposits to funnel accounts lack information about the stated activity of the account, the account owner and the source of the cash. A business account receives out-of-state deposits with debits that do not appear to be related to its business purpose. There are notable differences between handwriting of the on the payee and amount lines and the signature lines on checks issued from an account that receives out-of-state cash deposits. Wire transfers or checks issued from a funnel account are deposited into or cleared through the U.S. correspondent bank account of the Mexican bank. Okay, sounds good.